Welcome back and uh, of course uh, still here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The conversation continues as we dig deeper and of course uh, try to expand the whole investigation concerning the collapse of the 21-story building in the Ikori, Ikori area of Lagos. Yesterday, of course, breaking news, uh, Femi Oshibona's body was found. Uh, the death toll currently is about 36 persons that have been confirmed dead um, and of course a few others still recovering in hospital as rescue efforts continue and uh, we as nigerians continue to hope that a few more people uh, maybe more than a few hopefully are found alive in that rubble uh, we of course will continue the conversation this morning we're speaking with a legal practitioner mr tunde esson who's joining us good morning mr esson thanks for your time thanks for joining us Thank you for having me on your program. All right. Um, the the um, conversation concerning, you know, this disaster, you know, goes in different directions. Um, one of them is with the level of approval for a 21-story building. There was initially uh, a rumor, or initially the narrative, rather, that uh, it was only approved to be a 15-story building, but, of course, it went further to be developed into a 21-story building, and that may be one of the reasons the you know, building eventually collapsed. Um, I want you to share your views with us on um, the legality of going beyond the approved number of stories for a building. Okay, once again, thank you for having me on your program. As a starting point, and I say this with all sense of responsibility, it wasn't the place of the deputy governor to speak to the level of approval granted or not granted in respect of the collapsed building. It wasn't the proper person to speak to it. The general manager of the building control agency Mr. Goma, he came out to say the approval granted was for 15 levels, not 21. And if there is somebody who can speak authoritatively, it should be him. If there's another person who can speak authoritatively, it should be the Commissioner for, for Physical Planning and Urban Development, not the Deputy Governor. Because what it does is to leave the this very bitter taste in the mouth that there's a whitewashing going on. That there's this rush to exonerate the developer on the part of the deputy governor. You know? Yes. Having said that, we will leave the political part of it, the whitewashing part of it, and I will come directly to your question. It is the responsibility of the commissioner for fiscal planning and urban development to, to grant permits an approval on any building over eight levels. Say, say that again. Now, um, what he has done is that it has been able to grant a respect of any level, uh, but what he has done for the end of administration is to say, you know what, for anything below eight, eight levels, well, my subordinate can. Tunde Asong, can, can you hear me clearly? I want to be personally involved. Uh, Mr. Asong, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I, I would like you to repeat that. You said whose responsibility should it be to approve uh, beyond it, eight it floors? You the commissioner for physical planning and urban development. To approve a building beyond it, eight floors or it, up, up to eight floors? You, you know, interestingly, when it comes to development, when it comes to building, when it comes to urban renewal, it's all of this is four squarely within the portfolio of the Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development. That is responsibility. In fact, there's a law in Lagos State, a 2010 law, which bears all of these responsibilities in the, in the Commissioner. Of course, he has, he, he has the agencies under him. You're talking, of, you're talking of last five, you're talking of the Building Control Agency and the Urban Renewal Agency, but they are all directly reporting to the Commissioner. So that is his responsibility. Of course, you can strike the argument and say, oh, every ministry is, is, is an adjunct of the governor. So whether you're the commissioner for, for physical planning or anything, you are an extension of the governor. But, but day to day, the approval is granted by the commissioner for physical planning. That, that's his job. Okay, so um, 
Let me also ask, do you think it's possible to have an approval for eight floors, um, eight or 15, eight originally, and then it moves to 15, and then it graduates to 21? Is that possibility that let, that let, can happen? Let, of course it can happen. Don't forget that, like I said to you, you have three agencies under the commissioner, you know, for fiscal planning and um, urban development. You have the physical permit approval authority, you have the building control agency, then you have the urban renewal agency. Now, it is the duty of the permit authority to say, okay, you know what, I've granted, let me it, it, it approval for you to, to build eight, eight levels, eight story building. But you have the, you have the view that you want to, you have the view that you want to increase that. What you do is to go back to, to that authority to say, okay, I want to increase it from 8 to 10 to 100 to 1 million. But it is the duty of the authority to say that what you have there, what this, 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 this extension you're asking for, can it be accommodated within what, what, what's on ground? So you look at it. So you, so you look at the foundation, you look at the soil type, you look at a lot of factors to grant or to refuse to grant the approval for extension. Okay, Mr. Isol, so um, we eventually will get, we'll come back here because um, eventually um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can talk about, you know, a 21 story. Um, did the government check to see that the foundation that was set up for that building could carry 21 floors? Um, we'll get back there, but I, I want you to go on to talk about whose approval is needed to build beyond eight floors. If you're getting to 15 stories, uh, 15 floors, if you're getting to 21, Whose approval is needed for that? I can, I can tell you authoritatively that as much as I want to say is directly the governor, it's actually under the point of the Commissioner for Physical Planning and uh, Urban Development. I can give that answer straight up. Can you, can you repeat that, please? The level of approval that you have just um, asked a question in respect of falls within the purview of the Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development. One story see, building. It is not the responsibility of the governor of the state to sit and say, okay, I, uh, you want to be the house of whatever level, and I begin to give you approval. That is not his job. That's why you have subordinates like that, the commissioner. That is his job. All right, then. So let's also talk about, um, because there seem to be, we're hoping that the panel would do its uh, diligence and then would we'll definitely find out, hopefully, you know, what went wrong at, one, at what point. But uh, you also uh, would agree with me that um, the reason why we have, you know, codes and laws, building laws and codes, is so that people cannot build, you know, the way they deem fit. People should be able to. Now, there's a body, the, the question will now be, um, now that, you, you know, we have this structure that was erected 21, which body is responsible to ensure that enforcement, you know, that the structure is actually erected according to the laws that guides building, the building permits and, you know, um, codes in Lagos State. So which body is responsible for ensuring compliance, monitoring, and all of that? I can tell you that the job of uh, Mr. Bonaoki is suspended general manager of um, building control agency. That's Lagos State building control agency. Their primary job is enforcement and compliance. So it is not enough for him to come out to say, oh, the approval that was given was for 15th floor, how did they get to 21th floor? He had a responsibility really to shut it down. But like I said, I'm beginning to feel that there are other factors which I do not want to go to. I don't want us to make conjectures. I mean, the deputy governor has come out to overrule his, his, his own general manager. The general manager who is starting with the responsibility of enforcement and compliance came out to say, no, this was what was granted. But the deputy governor came out to say, no, 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 Mr. Bonaoki, you are lying. So you, you, even before, I mean, you had, you had made reference to, to, the, to the panel. Even before the panel has been given the opportunity to sit, top, 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 top members of the government are already going contrary to, to each other. You know, so let's get the politics out of it. It is, it is the duty of the building control agency to 
Yeah, but um, now let's talk about, I mean, if you, if you know the story well enough, there's uh, a part where it says that uh, uh, Femi Oshibona was arrested at some point for going beyond the amount of flaws that was approved. Um, you're definitely fine. With due respect, the government, the government said what the government approved was 31 flaws. I mean, it's, it's not a shame, really. I, I thought that should have been left to the, to the country set up to look at all of this and come up with their findings. Because what I see is a lot of whitewashing going on. It, I mean, nobody seems to care about the, about, about the poor workers who died, who died on the site. There seems to be very consistent attempts, you know, to, to pay the developers some kind of, oh, it was just a minor infraction, it was giving approval to build 21 floors and all of that. But having said that, your, your question, again, let me put the out of it, your question is, who is responsible for monitoring and, 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 and enforcement? That was Mr. Golanaki of uh, Lasca, that legal state building control agency. Who has currently been suspended. Yeah. Mr. Isong, go ahead. You, sir. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm just clarifying that Bola Hoke has been suspended by the governor um, as a after this incident. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm saying, I, I just was clarifying that Mr. Bola Hoke has been suspended um, after this incident. Uh... Go ahead. Two uh, days on. Go ahead. You saying that? Go ahead. Can you confirm that Mr. Bola has been suspended or what? Has been, has been suspended. Yes, I just was clarifying that. No, Go ahead. Been, no, he has been suspended. Yes. And you want to say that? I'm looking at Mr. Bola. Okay, with due respect to him. You know, if 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 you are made the general manager of the building control agency, and there are powers beyond you which will not allow you to do your work. The proper thing to do is not to come out and say, the same to all of, and all of that. Resign. Resign. Because it came out categorically. He said, I am the person confirmed with the right and the responsibility to, to monitor buildings in legal state, to enforce compliance with legal standards. And I know for a fact that program will give me for 15 floors. Now, if a man goes ahead to build 21 floors and you cannot control him, well, even when you shoot, I would just say, well, I'm not a figure ahead, I will, I will, I will resign. Okay, so um, yesterday when we had Collins Balogun, an expert, concrete uh, technologist, he talked about that, uh, he mentioned some necessary um, steps that need to be followed. He talked about uh, soil test, architectural design, and mechanical design electrical and structural design. Now, is, is it possible that one of these steps can be skipped? And could it be that, you know, that's the case with the collapse of, uh, you know, the story building in Ikoi? You know, I'll tell you something. If, if you look at all the 2019 regulations, you know, um, we never lack of the right thing to do when it comes to law. If the regulations are followed, it only force my job. That is an act of God that will make any building for last in legal state. So it's not like the laws and regulations are not there. But they are nobody complies with them. Nobody complies with them. So it is not a question, I mean, if you look at those regulations, if you look at the level of what is, what is required for you to have a permit, for you to have an approval in legal state, for you to do the legal state, if those things are followed, we will be talking about this. But it is not me. I mean, Lenny Gadi City is there. Senator of all nations is there. Now we are dealing with the Koyi building. In two years, we are dealing with because nothing will change. We will just talk about this. Oh, we are not about, oh, this is not good, this is not good, and we move on. It has not been about the law. It has not been about the regulations. It has not been about those things. They are there. So you're saying that it's possible oh, yeah, that, that yeah so you're saying that it's possible that you know the developers or those who were, were you know involved in construction of this uh, structure actually would have skipped the process maybe the soil testing or architectural design uh, and what have you it's, it's possible <laughs> you know the truth is that if you are doing if, if you are doing a change one story building the level of, of, of approval required for any, I mean, for the, le the level of stuff you have to comply with, 
We are so much Jewish. But you will find out that all the barbarians actually, all the Yarrifin were employed to build this without, without, without anybody saying no, you are not complying with the, with the planning that was given to you. As long as there are no repercussions of the things that we do, as long as you have people who are bigger and stronger than government, we, we keep having them. As long as there are no repercussions. We keep coming back to this same story. In a year time we talk about it. In two years time we, we talk about it. And that is the truth. It's just talk. M Mr. Isom. It's just talk. <coughs> Mr. Isom, do you think it's important? So really, really, it is not. It is not by your roots, not by your regulations, not by your laws. You have more than enough. But who are you sure compliance? Nobody. Yeah. So we have this climate is all over the place. So as long as those, as long as there are no, you know, you know, no consequences for wrongdoing, we keep having this talk like this. Mr. Isom, do you think it's important that the Lagos State Government begins to look at all the approvals that have been given in the last two years um, and does a thorough check on every um, uh, structure that has been built in the last two years uh, in Lagos that is beyond five floors? <laughs> you know, interesting thing is that if you can't even construct a fence in Lagos without an approval, I'm going to have a nice fence. Without an approval. So I like what you said. But if anybody went to do it, yeah, for the for, for the sake of the fact that we are talking, yes, let them go back five years and look at every approval given. But is that going to happen? No, it's not going to happen. Don't be surprised that I'm having a conversation again in, in a year, another twenty story collapse, and we're and we're back to the same story to win them. I mean, you've given a very fantastic suggestion. Can you can you review your permits in the last five years, in the last four years, in the last two years? Well, I can tell you for free that will happen. When we talk, when we cry, when we declare three days of money, and we move on. That's who we are. That's really sad. Um, we will say good morning to Dikpo Ajayi. He's the president, Architects Reg uh, Registration Council. Uh, Mr. Ajayi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really sad discussion, you know, and every time that we have to go through this, it's, it's really, really hurtful. Um, <clears throat> but I want you to share your thoughts on where we are so far. The government has, of course, set up a panel to, invest, uh, to look into this uh, incident. Um, I've seen people say that this should be a criminal investigation and not, you know, a situation where a panel should be set up. Uh, do you agree with that, or you know, are we okay with just looking at a panel, you know, that would submit this report in thirty days? Uh, I I say I wouldn't uh, agree because I look at the I visited the site myself with my team, and uh, as the head of the seven regulatory body in Nigeria and president of ACOM, I believe that uh, they are responsible for regulation. I believe that at least any member of this seven uh, built environment should be on that panel because they are the custodian of regulation in Nigeria and they are present in each state of the federation. And uh, these people are not less than 10, 20, 40 years of experience in the industry, engineers, architects, town planner, um, content surveying, and I believe strongly that it's the person that knows the history that can tell the story. Uh, number two, I wouldn't condemn the people appointed now to be on the panel. In our own system, we have the panel, we have the tribunal backed up by the public of Nigeria by law. And I think nobody wants to mess around. So I think the, the time given to the, even the panel is too long. Because you know Nigeria, in two or three uh, weeks, people will forget about what they are doing. Everybody will be doing what they, they want to do. So I believe that more qualified professionals, satisfied professionals, should be on that panel. And their body has written a proposal and letter to the government to that effect three days ago. And I believe that uh, the investigation is just the processes, two ways, and number two, uh, uh, they think of uh, what do we do? What is the uh, approval? 
The process is approval process. The second one is supervision. So if you have a process and you have supervision, the professionals on this particular building at Gerard should be called upon to come and answer questions. There's nothing that I want to answer anymore. After you ask the question from this program, who has their registered license? They can be tracked with numbers. So they should be able to test the story within one week. Then we move to the contractor. What is the selection of the contractor? When you get there, there is no contractor on the board. No professional just put their phone numbers. It's part of the corruption and incompetence in Nigeria. So I believe that uh, uh, we, should, we should start very well this time around. Uh, it's not a large crowd of people. Two or three people will find a solution to this thing. You have the approval process. You have the implementation process. What happened during the approval process? What happened during the implementation process? That's my own view that I say. I think the committee might not be able to give in-depth uh, solution to this one. Thank you very much. Okay, so at this point in time now, uh, what do you think will be the way forward? Uh, the way forward is to either leave the committee at its days and uh, widen the, the numbers, and at the same time, they make presentation on the A, the processes, then the implementation. That is the process in the built environment. The, 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 the process are there. You'll be able to identify from the consultant on this project. You'll be able to know the papers, like the architect said, he said they approved uh, 15 floors and they built 21. It's, tra it's trackable. Bring the papers. Is it true? Is it not true? It's not a matter of suspending the architect. It's a matter of asking questions for that. Where are your papers? A layman will be able to know how many floors were approved, how many floors were built. And these developers so, uh, in Nigeria, at times they just go to the site, they start building in the name of developer. They bring foreigners who are not concerned with our laws. And when you come to this country, you are supposed to register a medical doctor like engineers abroad in Canada, North America, in Europe. Don't just come to a country and call yourself an architect. I don't want to believe the people that were paraded on, this, on the screen that they are they are Italian, they are this, they built in South Africa. They can't do that in South Africa. We don't just come to a country and start operating. There must be rules and regulations. Even a driver in North America, you must get through stages before you can drive in, in, in the street, on the road, on the express. That's the only way you can be accept that is acceptable in any part of the world. But our country is so porous. A bricklayer can be called an architect in Nigeria. Then what is your number? Every architect, we are no more than, like, architect, for instance, we are no more than 5,000 in the country so far since 1969. So they have numbers. And we have devised a system, APR numbers, a number that enables one to track down the professionals in the industry. So this is a computer age that I think to make use of, uh, of technology. So I saw on the screen yesterday night, so they are, they, the site was so bad that they were trying to uh, arrest people on the site. That's not the process. Who are the people involved? Two or 10 people, 20 people. Interview them within one week. We get the answers. We now go whether the materials are really okay or not. We have a process where we go to the lab to test the iron rod, to test the materials, to test the block, and the architect or the engineer who have record of it. In two days, the record we may provide, we may, uh, we may make available for us to really know what is the problem. But presently in the country, the country is developing in a righteous form. Anybody right. can just start anything. Go on, a developer will, will, will get approval for two buildings. He's building 50, 200. They are there. All right. So, Mr. Ajay, uh, you hold it's on. A, it's professional. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's not, not, nothing, you know, about this whole discussion that um, doesn't make me sad. Um, Tunde Asson, let's, let, me, let me bring you back in. I'm sure you listened to uh, Dick Wajay. He's the President Architect uh, Registration yes, Council. Um, and I'm going to take the same question to you. Do you think there should be a criminal investigation instead of a panel being set up to submit their report in 30 days and, and whatnot? You don't listen to me, sir. 
Yeah, I, my heart is just broken. You know, because it doesn't matter what we discuss there. This will repeat itself. And we have this conversation again. It's not a test. Look at what, what you said. The statement that I said, it's never been about regulations. The regulations are there. We are not regulated. But who are obeying those regulations? So really, now he's talking to you, now he's coming there, now he's speaking all the English, but what does it change? What does it really change? You know, people died. And people should be held criminally responsible. Beyond the panel, people should be held criminally liable for this. Human beings died. Thank you. Hmm. But uh, don't you also think, uh, maybe, maybe go back to Mr. Jai now, uh, don't you think that um, at this point in time, because he's mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, we have laws, there are a lot of regulations, we are over-regulated, but the issue now is the fact that uh, there's no implementation. But in this particular case, there's a body that's responsible to ensure compliance. And should we not be putting the blame on the person who knows that there are laws and people should ensure that uh, you know there's compliance with the building code and the building permits? Well, um, on my side, I don't believe that uh, there are many regulators. There are state regulatory bodies. There are national regulatory bodies which is allowed. And uh, they have their functions. The only thing that we see in Lagos is that uh, they are not well equipped. They don't have vehicles to police the state of regular uh, structures. Uh, individuals are faster, it's faster than government. So before they get there, the house is built. And the next thing is for, to bring people down to start uh, begging that they should leave a sentiment comes in. But as I said, there should be process. The process should be monitored by the state regulatory body, which is time planning this. Then the federal will look into it, ensure that they are members of the professional body, seven, seven, seven professionals in the built environment. They have numbers. Through the signboard, that's a display your signboard so that they can be tracked. In this case, they just put their phone number there. And when you call the phone number, it's not going. So the next thing you do, they should put their number there. They should put their code there. So they can be located. They can be tracked down by the regulatory body federal. So I don't think they are overregulated in first instance. Then number two, uh, it's unfortunate that it's very sad we, every day we start uh, repeating this thing. Once and for all, as I said earlier, this process is divided into two process of of of, of uh, approved plans the implementation that's all and the implementation are being supervised by the state government by law the numbers displayed displayed on the board will be used by the professionals to know whether who is the architect how competent who is the engineer who is the context of it? But they don't do it. So this is the problem. Then concerning the criminal investigation, yes, that's another thing entirely. The panel will look into it, then back up by law. But what I saw there in that place, there's a lot of incompetence. I won't comment now because the panel is sitting. Incompetence in terms of materials, uh, incompetence in the layout itself. You have 63 flats. Where are they going to park? What area are they parking? And they, they are using sophisticated gadgets proposed. Yes, are they going to say the, the, the cars should park on the roads? So we should look at the, at the plan. We should look for, out for 63 uh, uh, flats, maybe two cars per one flat. These are very, very important. Then when you see the plan itself, is it, is it something that can be, is it beatable? The engineer was said to have withdrawn. Well, I saw it, I didn't know the person who received the, the resignation letter. I don't think where I couldn't receive it. 
The architect that is there, well, on our we have checked. We have not seen the architect. So we should do the process of tracking. So, so the, the architect was not, is not registered in uh, Arcon. The architect on that project was not registered with your body. So far, from what we have had on the, on the screen, rumor, we have not been able to shut down because on our record, we did not see the APR number of that project because we have designed a system that when you are on a project before you start, you, you buy, you, you, you assess your APR. It's going to be sent to you personally on each project in the country. Therefore, if anything happens, you track down the architect. This is for the engineers. This is for the consensus of it. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> I want to so look into other things. Uh, when these people are not employed. Uh, Tune their song. We're, we're going to bring okay. you back uh, in in uh, just a second. Uh, um, but I, w I want Mr. Dikwa Jai to go on with um, um, his his uh, views here. Um, I've also I'll just quickly mentioned that I've also just seen, and this is where I want Tunde Song to speak on. Um, I've seen a video clip this morning of Femi Oshibona, who was um, being interviewed in a sister television station, uh, where he was basically saying that. You know, when he moved to Nigeria, he used to listen to architects and structural engineers. But over time, he eventually stopped, you know, and he stopped taking advice from them with his building project. He also spoke in that same interview um, about uh, a particular building or a particular structure that he constructed, I think, in the UK, where he went ahead to, create, to add additional flaws uh, without getting approval. I hope that that eventually goes viral. Well, I can't I can share it. But Tunde Asong will bring you in on that one. Um, Mr. Ajayi, I'm still with you here. I want you to speak on, from the experience that you've had driving around Lagos, are there certain buildings that you may have also seen? And in your mind, you've told yourself or you've thought to yourself, there's something obviously wrong with this structure and this is a ticking time bomb. Have you seen some of all these, you know, examples like that around Lagos? Yes, practically speaking, yes particularly the so-called developers. Then I want to I want to correct something. That somebody comes to a country to say he stops listening to uh, regulators, consultants, that's impunity. How can you stop? Do you get permission from government to stop listening to experts? It's a developing country, yes, but these are people who are well trained. I spent eight years in the university of the BSc Masters and, and uh, and industrial training before I can I could get my certificate. And I waited for another two years of tutelage to become an architect. And today I'm the president of the Council of Nigeria. So how can you say you're not listening to me? How can you say you're not listening to an engineer? I think it's a punity. It's a sad one. One to one want to engage such a person in this country. You see, go around the uh Ikoyi, go around to uh, Oniru, go down to uh, Shakwati, all those kind of places. You wonder what is happening around here. What are they doing? And these people said they are not listening to experts. Were they trained to be useless? Are, are they saying the experts are better to Nigerians or better than me that I'm talking? I've been to part, all part of the whole world. What are they talking about? This is a sad one. This is a sad statement. Okay. It's, it's stop listening to them. He start stop listening to an engineer. That's a sad one. Which materials, which drawing, which calculation will you show? You employ a brick like set of an architect? All right. I think it's to, a to this process, I think should be to be done in three days. All right, to, John, to, to their song, can you go ahead and, and also share your views on that? You are trying to interview. Where he said he has to stay for professional. Basically, that's the summary of that interview. And that, and that reflects the mindset of your money men and your people in power. It reflects the mindset of your poor and your, and your, and your middle class. You know what you hear in Nigeria? Education has come. Education is a scam. It's a mantra that we all repeat. It speaks to our mindset as a people. Now, I live in the Uduji area. That's supposed to be the low-density area. 
But on a daily basis, the whole place is being pulled down and all sorts of structures are springing up. No control. No regulation. Now let me tell you something that is funny. There's no building, there's no re renovation that comes up in Lagos that you don't feel. You will see the red mark. It becomes a negotiation thing. How much can I get to or feel it? So don't think that there's any, any, any development, any renovation that goes on in the legal state that in quotes the regulators do not know about. So they come with their thick red uh, paint. Um, paint and they say uh, stop work. You know what? It's about let's have a conversation. How much can I get so I can I can unseal? That is that is just the reality of our existence. So take the history of the developer. Go back to his interviews. Go back to his enablers. What they said in the past and what they are saying now. Go back. The enablers are there. There are people that you know in the media. You know in the clergy. They're there. The enablers are there. Those are your enablers, and that's a reflection of your nation. So when you see him talk this way, when I hear Mr. Jai, he speaks with so much passion. You're just wondering that what really is the problem. Can we continue like this? Can we, can, we, can we run a nation like this? Where there's absolutely no respect for education, no respect for rules, and those who are subject with enforcement, they turn the other, other way as long as you can do the needful, whatever that needful means in the Nigerian context. All I right. hope um, Mr. Sowo is strong enough. All right, Mr. Isong. To hold everybody that is responsible for this murder, because it is a mass murder. Yeah. Mr. Isong, I, I would have to wrap up here. Um, if you are social media active, I think I just sent you a message on, um, on a, check your social media platforms. I think I just sent you a message. Um, Tunde Isong, thank you so much for your time this morning. Dikwa Ajayi, President, Architects Registration Council, thank you both for speaking with us. Um, unfortunately, this is a really, really sad conversation, but it must be had. Thank you both, and we wish you a beautiful weekend ahead. We took a short break now. When we return, we'll just head straight to the second conversation about Abuja and the kidnappings. Please stick around.